Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Online Footprint Project. I'm your host, Ross McFarlane. Thank you so much for investing your time with us here today. If you're new to the Online Footprint Project or OFP, we interview successful business owners and share their stories about how they got started to where they are today. We also make sure that they share actionable value so you can start applying it to your business today. Now, I'm big on feedback, so I'd love to hear from you as to what you thought of the show, what you liked, what you didn't like. Please leave me an email, uh, ross at rossmcfarlane.com or leave some comments on our YouTube channel. This episode brought to you by funnelrevision.com. Do you want the freedom that comes from more sales? We help automate your business, much like this message. Unlimited funnel builds with your exclusive one hour use of the team each day. Click funnel experts, graphic designers, expert copywriters, and chat bot engineers. We do it all. Enjoy the freedom of funnel revision taking care of everything, so you don't have to. Check out funnelrevision.com today and enjoy the freedom of automating your business. Let's go! Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Online Footprint Project. I'm your host, Ross McFarlane. Thank you so much for investing your time with us here today. So uh, my friend Logan Tyler Nelson's come on the show. Uh, he's a performance enhancement expert, a published author uh, on Thrive Global and Medium. Um, Logan graduated with a BFA in action from NIU. Uh, and he also has his own podcast, Scratch Your Own Itch. So he just reached 100 episodes recently, which is phenomenal. So he's at now 103. So Man, I think that's awesome. So just keep doing what you're doing, Logan. Um, and yes, yeah, so I just want to bring him on the show and uh, we can have a bit of a chat and uh, we can learn more about you and, and what you do, man. So yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Oh, Ross, thank you so much uh, for inviting me on the show. Uh, dude, the level of guests that you've had on before I, um, I don't like to fall into the comparison trap because that <laughs> just leads to despair, but dang it. Man, uh, you've had some great guests, and it's only—it's uh, just an honor to be here. So, really appreciate it. No, man. Well, thank you for coming on. I, I really do appreciate your time today and uh, coming on, and uh, I really want to help share your story. And I think what you're doing is some great things, especially with the podcast. So, uh, yeah, man. I mean, how'd you get started with the podcast? Is that's that's cool. I mean, you know, I know my backstory. I hope most listeners know it as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's let's jump into your backstory. Um. Yeah, I listened to I started listening to podcasts about six years ago. And I started listening to it because I was really obsessed with interviews and I found myself like listening to Inside the Actors Studio. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a great, it, yeah. great Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's awesome. It's amazing. And um it's got this uh guy named James Lip on there and and he's he's the man at interviewing and and so I got really into sort of like learning about interviews and how to just listen better and so I started listening to podcasts because that was uh now a new medium that I could actually learn through you know like any subject I like I like listening to interviews with actors I like listening to interviews with directors with with writers um and then it kind of branched open and so um i started listening to other podcasts that weren't just catered to creatives i listened to entrepreneur podcasts and then and then after i graduated college i had um uh an extreme identity crisis i guess you'd say and uh personally um, are we allowed to get vulnerable on the show? Um, yeah, man, we can talk or, about whatever you want, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, after I uh, I graduated, I um, I don't know if anybody's ever been out there right now that's listening. It's had this uh, this thing where they identified themselves as, as one thing, and now maybe they lost their job, or maybe th- they're very successful already. And let's say they're afraid to actually be anything different because they identify themselves with money and who they are with money, for example. And um, when someone takes that identity away from you, like takes your your way of of being liked, for example, like my way of being liked was acting. And I didn't want to end up going to Los Angeles. I actually uh, stayed in DeKalb, Illinois, where I graduated from at NIU. And... I found myself uh, just less than a year ago 
um, having a few bad thoughts, suicidal yeah. thoughts, yeah. Um, that. Uh, thoughts that I uh, um, tried to uh, take my life. Uh, I walked up a three-story building, which is a parking garage, and I um, attempted suicide. And I, I lived through it, like, and it sucked a lot because then I put myself in uh, seven days of isolation um, because I was just scared to talk about it. I didn't know what they were going to do to me. Of like, course. if anybody found out, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, they're going to throw me in a psych ward. Like here in America, like they really they they um they don't take suicide very lightly. And I'm happy that they don't. It's a serious thing. But absolutely, um, I, f- for one, just found myself going into complete isolation. And when I was in this isolation, like the brain has a really hard time with just resting, just doing nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And my brain did that same thing. It, it wrestled with the idea of resting. Um, and so, like, I would make up these freaking like stupid morning routines and these little workouts even though I was hurt from my fall my my legs I I hurt my uh right knee and so I couldn't really do squats or anything like that but I would do like sit-ups and like do like girl push-ups and you can imagine me um doing this and and I realized while I was doing that 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 why I wanted to do that was because they don't teach you in school how to actually uh learn um, they teach you in school what to think about. And then after you graduate, you need to kind of teach yourself how to learn. And I think everyone is having a problem with um, identifying themselves because uh, there's a huge thing that they don't actually like teach you ever in high school is, is really like what, are, what is specifically the way that you learn. And for me, it was through activity. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah losing my voice. voice. I'm the same. Yeah, very much so. Like if I'm trying to learn something and I'm hands-on, I'm going to find that I progress so much quicker than if it's just reading from a book and then that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, And so like I found myself at the end of this uh, sort of like seven days of isolation being like really, 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 really like uh, asking myself these big questions of of what do I want to do with my life? Like, what do, what do I really want to do? Like, what would I be proud of? And that was something that I think you can't um, really, there's a quote that I, I often uh, live by. It's build something so great that even if you're rich, you can't buy it. And I, I looked back at podcasts and how that. those things always freaking saved me. When yeah. I felt super alone, when I felt down, when I didn't know what to do, I felt confused. And so I wanted to start this podcast just to sort of like be around the people that uh, lifted me up, that gave me, you know, incredible, incredible insight on, on how to be less confused. And, and uh, since then, I turned into being a, what I call myself a personality coach, which is someone who allows people to actually change and start being uh, better with their life. Uh, actually start learning more about themselves and using tactics of of being able to use their adversity and turn it into art. Um, uh, You know, take their messes and turn them into successes or take the success that they've had and be okay with changing because it's so hard to do it alone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, from there you've moved forward because, I mean, the, the fact that you're still here with us, the, the world's better off. So I'm, I'm really glad that things have, have turned around. Huh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, so that, that, that I think the one thing that comes out of having a podcast is you're really interested about people. And so, like, uh, right now, Ross, I want to ask you, like, have you ever had any um any any down moments in in your own life where you've just been like wow absolutely man like i mean you know i've i've never gotten to that that point but uh yeah we all do like and if and if anyone ever says they don't then you know they they're talking shit like you know through high school there's there's always moments i mean even now that i'll have i'll call them bad days where i'll wake up and i'll just be like fuck like i don't want to do anything today 
like I'll do some stuff, but really, and, and it happens, man. Like it's the down, I'll call it a down days, which I guess almost like softens up what it is, but it's more just, and it doesn't happen often, but when it happens, it's like, fuck man, like this day is just written off. Like, you know, really, I don't want to do anything, um, you know, and, and it happens and, you know, younger happened more often than not. Um, you know, as, as I'm getting older, it's just one of those things where it just happens periodically, but yeah, everyone gets the man. So certainly don't feel like you're isolated or alone in, in feeling like the bad days, or whatever, like when, when I say bad days, I don't mean to the, to the point that, you know, um, you know, you took it, but more just feeling really crappy or feeling really low or just no energy, um, a very different mindset to, to, to your norm. So yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's wild too, because it happens. Like I, I think even, um, people that are like really hard workers, like this anxiety that happens to people, um, which is a thing that's not really spoken about a lot. Like the anxiety to show up and be perfect is, is a, a bigger problem now in today's world than ever before. Why? Because we're seeing the highlight reels of everybody all the freaking time. Yeah. It's dangerous. All the time. Absolutely. It is so dangerous. Social media uh-huh. is, it's, look, it's, it's really, it's a double-edged sword because it's phenomenal in what it allows us to facilitate. Like it, it really just, it allows us to connect like you and I, you know, connect around the world. Like that is yeah. literally remarkable. Like it's, if you said a hundred years ago, oh, this was possible, like you wouldn't even be able to consider the, um, that this is something that can happen. But at the same time, you're right. Like Instagram, like all the visuals, especially Instagram is a highlight reel. Um, Facebook is like a TV show. You know, these are the, the way that you, um, you know, structure it. Twitter is like your opinion, but it's something that you can really just embellish. And, and it's something that is, is quite dangerous because then especially the kids, they'll, they'll see this because now it's, it's the norm where you can be a YouTube star. Whereas that wasn't a career 15 years ago. Whereas now there's there kids that literally say 12 or, you know, younger even, um, you know, and they're basically just saying, yeah, I, this is what I want to do. And that's now becoming more socially accepted. However, by seeing so many highlight reels on the internet, then it really just doesn't compare to, because no one wants to show their downside. Like, and it, it is a vulnerable topic when you have bad days, but the reality is bad days are normal. Like it's, it's perfectly normal. It's part of life. Um, you know, we can't feel up all the time. Like it just doesn't happen. Like, especially as you said, you know, you're trying to be busy all the time and, uh, you're trying to be perfect. Like that's something that something I had to work on in that I'm far from perfect, but whenever I would start something, I'd want to make sure it's perfect before taking it to market or before showing someone or before sharing my ideas and my thoughts with others about it. And, and that would hold me back because I mean, with this being a business podcast, let's use business as an example. Um, if you wait for something until you're completely comfortable and confident in it, then you've waited too long. And I've had that so many times before where I've had an idea and I want to take it to the market and I make it perfect. Uh, one of my biggest losses was I dropped 40 K on a platform that I had built. Um, not because I made it bone thin and I had the market test it, but it was because I wanted to make it perfect and shiny. And then I took it to market and then I saw how they reacted. And, uh, you know, that was a very expensive learning lesson, but at the same time I, I failed forward and I learned from it. So I'm, I'm happy. I went through that journey. I don't regret it, but at the same time, it's, I could have definitely avoided dropping 40 K. Um, so now I, I try to share that message. So then others can fail through me or, you know, fail through others. So then they don't have to actually go through the same journey to learn the same lessons. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and you can learn so much from others by actually. There's a, a a thing that I constantly remind myself is that um, you can learn from your own failures and be smart, or you can learn from other people's mistakes and be a genius. Exactly, my, um, my point. Exactly, trying to share your own failures with others so that they don't have to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and that's what business podcasts are great for. Is like actually try to don't take everything because I think <laughs> so many people do that. Uh, yep. They try to do it all at once. But, but if you just do like, I think this, this is super specific, take 15 minutes each freaking day where you know, you'll have time, you know, you'll have the most important thing, which I coach people on is energy and having the energy to actually do something new. 
is really hard. It's actually something that most people don't don't ever talk about. Um, this sort of like, oh, like what do you mean energy? Like, like no, when you feel like a rock star for 15 minutes of the day, that's when you fall into flow where nothing is going to stop you from actually conquering this goal. So take that 15 minutes and, and try the new thing. But then also, you know, throughout the whole day, learn from other people's mistakes and be really – a genius by learning from everyone else's failures, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So anyways, that's just a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it's good. I mean, and that's what this is all about. It's more just an interesting conversation, learning about your story, but at the same time, just having a bit of fun and, and a bit of a chat. And and that's it. It is. It's about, you know, if you can learn from others, then it saves you having to go down the same path. It'll significantly speed up your rate of progress. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, you're saying you listen to podcasts for about six years. Prior to starting Online Footprint Project, which I think we're at about 75-ish episodes now, um, yeah, I, I could count on one hand the amount of podcasts I'd listened to prior. <laughs> um, and uh, wow. yeah, someone had said to me, they're like, oh, hey, like, you know, well, and it, it was interesting because someone made a post online and they're like, oh, hey, um, you know, who's, who's got a podcast? And uh, I messaged the dude and I was like, oh, yeah, I've got one. Do you need a hand? Like, are you looking to set it up? Do you have any questions? Just, just trying to be helpful. And he starts grilling me. He's like, oh, well, what's, what makes your podcast different than anyone else's? Like, what's the difference between yours and Tim Ferriss's? I'm like, fuck off, dude. Comparing me to like Tim Ferriss, like eat a dick. <laughs> um, I'm like, dude, I, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I haven't listened to Tim Ferriss's podcast, so I couldn't tell you. He's like, oh, well, these questions make you uncomfortable. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just, I was trying to offer you help and you're being a dick. <laughs> so, Gee. Yeah. <laughs> was this on social media yeah yeah it was and then the funny thing was i'm like well, was this well, on social media yeah yeah on a, on facebook and the guy was like well i said to him what are your goals with this and he's like well i'm starting up a facebook group but i'm being very selective about who i want in the group for podcasting i was like yeah no thanks <laughs> no thanks yeah so i've had a funny Dude, <laughs> yeah yeah you, you, you know, it's funny. I see it. I see it all the time that um, the thing is, though, is, is uh, people are a little less kind on Facebook or social media. And it just it, it hurts me a lot because I know for a fact that you can be a really great person. You're a really great person. Like, that's probably the one place that you can actually show up and be a value. Yeah. Um, so much easier than being a value in life. <laughs> like Absolutely. really. So when you take someone down on that, like, oh man, that's it. I think it's a terrible reputation too. And that's something I, I think more people should take like deliberate uh, sincerity on. Like what kind of brand do they have on their social media? Like what are they, like who is Ross? You know, when someone thinks of, you know, for example, The Rock, right? Yeah. Uh, the Rock joined Johnson and they think of, who he is as a person and how he shows up they can think of yeah oh, that guy can freaking carry like 14 horses like he could you know um he could take on a tank uh he could you know <laughs> actually be the real life hercules you know and and that's the same with social media is like you need to think about that's why branding is a is a really serious thing even if you don't own a freaking business but if you're listening to this right now and you're having uh you know a problem in your life and people are showing up with preconceived notions of who you are and they don't, you end up being someone that they don't expect. It's probably often a branding problem, right? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting because like with, with like say Twitter, for instance, like when Twitter started off, it blew up, but it was so negative. Uh, whereas now it's, it's kind of shifted a bit, but it's, it's a case of, yes, some may be branding themselves, incorrectly but for others that say don't have a brand or you know have no business or anything like that it's just that it's now facilitated for them to be able to be their negative self online and, and that's when it brings out trolls and things like that so there's really good and bad of the internet like it's really a you know there's there's two sides to the coin there's good and evil yin and yang however you want to phrase it um and yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's one of those things where if, if you if you are doing good and you're helping others then that will show through your brand you know, there's, there's been many times I've heard that I've got like a nice guy persona, which if anything, I'm like nicer on the internet. <laughs> um, but you know, I try to stay as, as, as you know, nice and, and humble as possible. But um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where 
for, for those online. Like if you said some things online, if you did in real life, you'd get punched in the face. But because there's a screen there, there's that protection, then it doesn't, those social dynamics don't really make a problem as much for people. Whereas like if I'm trying to make a sales call or like trying to pitch something, I'll always suggest we get on a video call. As if my audience, as you know, with the podcast, half the audience is from the States. If I'm trying to sell something or offer a service by getting on that phone, even if it's a video call, it just humanizes the experience. The other person on the other side of the line now is empathy for you. It's no longer just a message of, oh, this is just another, you know, another text. It's a case of it's a real person. So yeah, it's, we got to be careful with, with how people act on the, the internet because there's really, in some cases, there's no holding back. And some people don't care because unfortunately, controversy does sell. Like um, use, you know, this is a very mild case, but like just before we, we were discussing prior to hitting record uh, with myself launching a new business, um, funnelrevision.com, uh, this morning I actually posted a, a post, um, like a picture in a certain Facebook group uh, in an attempt to go viral, just so that way people would then organically, they'd see the uh, post, see the uh, image, it was a bit of a funny image, and then they would organically check out my page. Now I did that uh, by basically, I just had a look over the last few days in the last week or so about what times people post, uh, what posts got the most engagement, and they would match up the times with that. So I thought, okay, strategically, I'm going to post this image when I think it's going to go most viral. Uh, and within 15 minutes, there was about 30 comments. So it's, it's doing all right. I'm, you know, it's been an hour since, so I'll check it later. But my point is, is that when you're on the internet, you can really just structure it however you want to structure it. You want to be a nice guy, you can be a nice guy. If you want to be a douchebag, you can be a douchebag. But at the end of the day, we're all real people. So if you if you did that in real life, it would be significantly different and be a different reaction than if you were to do it online. Yeah, so, Logan, absolutely. Yeah. That's, so, man, let's, let's jump in. Oh, sorry, man. You had the internet cut out there for a second. Oh, oh you're good. No, let's, good. let's jump into whatever you want to say. Cool, man. Well, yeah, I, I want to jump back into uh, in, in regards to your story. So you started the podcast and you started helping people. Tell us what it was like to get to 100 episodes. I mean, that, that journey itself, like that's an accomplishment. So I'd love to hear how, how you felt along the journey of getting to 100 episodes. Oh, man. I've uh, realized that uh, I love interviewing people. Like I love it. I find it, I find it challenging enough to where um, you can really bring out the best in people by first tapping in to the things that are really, 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 really something that they hold at a high regard. So it can be for many reasons. Some people are really like passionate about um, beliefs. Some people are really passionate about uh, VR. Some people are very passionate about money. Um, the podcast for me has been like a, a place for me to just be super curious about life again, which is great because I, I, I do prepare for my interviews. I, I try to look at all the stuff that they have online, um, all the books that they've written. I've had um, some pretty awesome guests on there that have talked about some very, 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 very uh, sad and happy things. And, and so I've had moments of, of um, and just going, wow, like I can't believe I connected with this person that would not give me the time of day if it wasn't for my podcast. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. and that's the best part about it. But it, it, at the same time, I think this is where most podcasters mess up is they don't keep the continual relationship with them. So I try to make it a habit to check in with a lot of my guests as much as possible because uh, I think a lot of people do this with podcasts. If you have a podcast right now, you probably found out that you've gotten a lot of free, awesome advice. And unless you actually start implementing that advice, it's just, it's kind of like a thought, right? It's the same thing as a thought that's not even put into action. It's just a thought. So unless you start actually utilizing, I'm starting to now look through my archive of, of new relationships and go, where can I actually start building something out of this? Like, how can I turn this new awesome relationship that I created with someone and make it even better for both of us. 
So I'm, I'm starting to uh, brainstorm and, and, and put a little, uh, I've got a couple ideas for maybe potential courses and stuff. Um, but really, overall, your initial question was just like, how is that journey? I think that the journey is, honestly, if you're in a place right now and you have a small business or you're in a place right now where you're just really sad and you want to start something and you're afraid to do it, like a podcast, like you're like, nah, that's not really for me. I want to let you know that uh, that's a limiting belief right now that you're challenging yourself. That's absolutely BS. Uh, and you need to start one because this is going to happen to you. You're going to have now an opportunity for any of your grandchildren to look back on what you created and to listen in on the on the conversations that you're having and that is the coolest thing it's just as awesome as a blog i think it's even better than a blog and i think it's as good as a book like gosh dang it i think these interviews will be around for a long time as long as you have internet access and let's just be honest like the internet is getting bigger and bigger and bigger so it's going to get even bigger and you can find out so much more about someone's actual story through a podcast interview than I think you can a book why because they wrote the book as sort of like the dancing foundation point and now they had those thoughts and now they get to build upon those thoughts which makes a podcast in my opinion way way cooler absolutely you know what I mean yeah because if, they had, if you, they've written a book and then you're interviewing them about their book, they now have time to reflect on what they've written. And they can yeah. actually go back and they can invest thought into, okay, well, this is what I've structured and written, but now I can digress further. Because you write a thousand words or you say a thousand words. It's, you know, I've tried to do it before for courses. I, I, end up, I, I wrote a script for my course and it, just, it took way too long. Like me freeballing it um, or, you know, spinning it out just, uh, you know, off the cuff. Honestly, in comparison to writing down, it just took way too long. Like with me reading each word, I'd wrote like 2,000 words and I'd read them in like a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. And I know yeah. I speak quicker than most, but yeah, it was just, yeah, I was like, this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. Like, and it's it really, if, if you've got that fear to start something, it's it coming right back to the beginning of this conversation where it was a case of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect to start. Like, I mean, look at this podcast, Online Footprint Project. I decided to start it. I started it. And then on Facebook, I messaged a bunch of random people that had businesses. And within three weeks, I was fully booked for two months. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be that you, you know, it has to be perfect. It's just a case of just do it, try it. I didn't know what I was doing in two more months. I didn't know if I was going to continue, but I figured, all right, well, if I at least book out daily for two months, then, or almost daily, then I've at least structured my next two months and that'll give me some direction. And I at least have something I can invest time into that isn't business. It's just something fun and, uh, you know, kind of like a hobby. And, and really that helped me along my journey as well. So, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without having met the, you know, fantastic people I've met. Uh, and as you said before, sometimes you wouldn't get the time of day to be able to speak with these people unless you've got something like a podcast or, um, you know, like a, a show or, or like something that's interactive that, that they get value out of the same time because it's not all about what they can do for us. It's what we can do for them as well. So, you know, in our case, being podcast hosts, at least we can offer them uh, at a minimum, at an absolute minimum, we can offer them our audiences. You know, and I always try to offer some insightful yeah. messages as well, but at least we can offer them our audiences. So then if it's someone that's a, you know, $50 million man, it's a case of, well, look, I mean, you know, I'm sure I'd know things he doesn't know, but I, when it comes to business, no doubt he would know a lot more. So I can offer him some value in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the coolest thing is sometimes you talk to people that may be the next, uh, the next Steven Spielberg and you don't even know it. And that's why a podcast is so important is you, you might have guests that have a huge authority already. And then you have another guest that's not as well known but has the same potential. Therefore, I think the same value that another guest may have. Like I know that I learn sometimes better, way, way better by friends of mine like you, Ross, who actually got on the phone with me and had a, had a, a sort of like a strategy plan of what I wanted to do with my own business more than I have freaking Tony Robbins. Yeah. Because guess what? Like Tony Robbins is a mentor of mine, but he's not talking to me. Um, yeah, exactly. and, 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 and so, you know, from a distance, exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. But I, I really want to point out this though, Ross, like I actually might be able to learn better from you because I see you as a friend instead of a sergeant like Tony yeah. Robbins may be I get that. like, do this or, you know, losing <laughs> his voice and telling me what to do. Um, and, and I think a lot of our generation, the up and coming gen, gen Y and gen X, they're having a hard time to actually implement what they're learning. Um, because if it's not easy, they don't do it. And that's fine. Like, cool. All right. If it's not easy, then don't do it. Um, but straight up, like, you know, for a fact that you'll change if you get some, some kid to, to actually like feel encouraged to do something that's different with their life. Like they, they, they run out of a movie wanting to do anything Spider-Man did. Why? Because they were inspired. Like they were, and they were inspired by, by, by him because he had vulnerabilities and he showed what it was to be a geek first and therefore that's the hero to him it's not the sort of like tony robbins where i don't even i don't i don't resonate with him as much because he's already way far ahead of me you know what i mean so a yeah, uh, long tangent over <laughs> <laughs> no man it's a you know very insightful and i completely agree with you so logan for those listening at home how how do they get in contact with you like so for, for your services that you offer um you know what's what's the best way for people to get in contact with you Dude, wow. Um, I would love for you to honestly call me or text me because you're saying, Ross, just give me the idea. Like, call me or text me 815-375-4919. And this is what I do best. I, I, like I said, I'm a personality coach and I try to get other people on podcasts because I believe that you have a story that is amazing. And only is better than best. So let's say you have a company right now where you are successful in your area. And you go, ah, gosh, you know, I don't want to go out there. There's already an Adam Sandler out there doing something. You know, here, I'll plug my my shameless. I I don't know if I can go out there. (laughs) You know, it's, it's a tough world out there. I don't know, you know. All right. Well, guess what? That's the only Adam Sandler out there. So you don't want to be like Adam Sandler, right? So what you want to do is you want to find your specific awesomeness. And so that's what I do. I'm going to try to find your specific awesomeness so I can pitch to you to a podcast to get you on so you can drive your SEO up so you can drive out and, and actually make more customers turn into awesome clients that are going to stick with you religiously and never buy from anyone else because they've ever heard you talk about what you do best for 30 minutes plus. Um, that's, that's a great, that's a great value. So I'm doing that right now. I'm actually having a, a great sale right now for just $67, uh, for a month of coaching and for a two, uh, page pitch, I will get you on three podcasts that month. Uh, not just any podcast, but podcasts that are for your audience. And so uh, that's, that's what I'm doing right now. Logan, I love it. Yeah, fantastic. And that's cheap as well, man. Like that's a great special. So yeah, thanks for offering that uh, on this uh, podcast because yeah, that's, that's very cheap. So, you know, and, and no doubt that, um, you know, your time is very valuable. So that's, that's phenomenal. So that's, that's a great value there. It's a fantastic investment. So, Logan, I really appreciate you coming on, man. This has been great. Uh, one last time for all the listeners, what's your podcast name? And is there any links that you want to drop uh, for people to check out, whether it's your Facebook personal profile page or anywhere else? Yeah, that'd be awesome to just check me out at logantylernelson.com. Uh, like I said, I dropped my number, so you can just you can text me there. Um, and I would rather get on the phone with you because we might not be a good fit. And that sucks. That hurts me. And that probably is going to hurt you too. But I won't know until we actually get on the phone and have a phone call about this. Um, and I'm not going to keep this offer for very long. Not because I'm trying to be a sleazy salesman tactic. It's just I already have a lot of people uh, that I'm trying to serve right now. 
and to do it all isn't going to give you the best results if I'm just doing way too much. Absolutely. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew and I don't want to give you bad service uh, just because I have way too many people. Um, so that's just what it comes down to. Yeah, fantastic. All right, Logan. Well, yeah, this has been a fantastic chat. I've had a lot of fun and I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing your story. Um, we got pretty deep there at one point and I appreciate the, the honesty and the vulnerability. It's, it's been a great chat, man. Thank you so much for having me on your show, man. Uh, and I just want to let everyone know that's listening to this, like Ross, you're listening to an awesome leader right now. He is the man. He's a genius <laughs> at what he does. Uh, and I, and I'm not, I'm not kidding around. Like this is a, this is a guy who's not different at all on his interviews. He's very much a kind, awesome human being that's just trying to help people out, um, and serve as much as he can. And I've, I've asked this guy for so much and he's never, ever been like, Hey, screw you, mate. Like I'm too busy. <laughs> like he always responds with with just incredible insight. And uh, I, I think that says a lot about a person. So thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah, that. Um, please, please just keep following him. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We're talking over each <laughs> other. Yeah, no, man, I really appreciate that. That, that you know, means a lot. So, you know, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, it's, it's been great sharing your story. And um, yeah, man, we'll, we'll keep keeping in touch. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to hearing how things progress. Likewise, my friend. I'll see you on the other side. If you did get some value from this today, please leave a five-star review on the podcast or check out our YouTube channel and leave a comment below. That would be so appreciated. Catch you next time.